guys welcome back to my channel my name is Benenden and for today's video we're going to be doing another sunscreen review today no we're not today we're doing a sunscreen ranking today we'll be ranking all of the chemical sunscreens that I've tried in the last year specifically ones that you can find in the United States last week we reviewed a lot of Asian sunscreens and a majority of them were chemical not everyone has access to those sunscreens and they want to find one that's maybe in their local drugstore or Target, Walmart, Ulta. I am not including any mineral or mineral combo sunscreens in this video. I will do a separate video on that because there are a lot of them. My categories are going to be similar to the last video. The only thing is I added one extra category for that in between. Um, so the first category is put it on my face. These are holy grail products, things that I really love. The next category is mid. These are things that they're just kind of okay I didn't love them I didn't hate them I might have finished it on my body or preferred to use it on my body the next category is not for me maybe for you it's self-explanatory these are sunscreens that I didn't really love for my oily acne prone sensitive skin but you might like if you have a different skin type or skin concerns and then the last category is trash so we always need a trash category for those sunscreens I just belong in the garbage and I would not recommend to anybody. All right, so the first one is the La Roche-Posay Hilarion Double Repair Face Moisturizer. It's an SPF 30. It retails for $19.99. I think I got this one at Ulta, I wanna say. This is not water resistant um, and this is a two-in-one moisturizer slash sunscreen. This one has avobenzone 3%, homosalate 5%, octosalate 5% and octocrylene 7%. It also has ceramides and niacinamide. This one did not irritate my eyes. I didn't have any burning. The moisturizer is very thick, like the formula is a very thick cream, um, which I think is best used in the winter time. I would definitely not reach for this one in the summer at all. I'm gonna put this one in the mid category because I liked it in the winter, but I don't like it for the summer and also I like it on my body. It's very moisturizing for my body. So when I first wore it, I wore it on bare skin and it was kind of glowy. It wasn't really oily though, which I liked. Um, but after two hours, I just felt like it was a little bit too moisturizing for my face, which is why I switched to using it on my body. Reapplication obviously felt heavier than the first application and it wore great underneath makeup. It kind of gave you that glow from it within look. Um, and I had to go ahead and powder it down because I prefer more matte finish for my oily skin. And it also also layers well with other products. I think the sunscreen was created for people with more dry skin than oily skin like myself, but you can get away with wearing it with you, if you have oily skin if you just skip your moisturizer and maybe choose something else for reapplication because it just did not work well for that. I did have some small breakouts from it though, so if you have acne prone skin, probably skip this one, but if you don't, you won't really have a problem. It wore fine on my face, but I didn't love it for my face, so I think I'm gonna put it in the mid category. All right, the next one that I tried that's a chemical sunscreen is the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Face Cream. This is an SPF 30 again. This one was pretty affordable. It retails for $12. You get 1.7 fluid ounces. The active ingredients are avobenzone 3%, homosalate 9%, octosalate 5% and octocrylene 7%. This one also includes niacinamide and hyaluronic acids and some peptides. I am going to put this one in the not for me, maybe for you category because I didn't love this one on my skin. And also this one stung my eyes. I found that it caused me some breakout, but it did work fine as your first application, but it got greasy towards your second application. The consistency of this one is a thick cream, kind of like the La Rouge Posay one. Um, it is, again, it's a moisturizer slash sunscreen as well, and it gives a natural to glowy finish. On bare skin, it wasn't greasy on my bare skin, but it did start to pill up and break up a little bit. Um, and then after two hours, it starts to look a little bit shiny. I wore this one for with makeup as well. And for me with makeup, it didn't really work that well. It kind of started to break up and pill again with the makeup, which is not a good look, especially around your nose. I think this one would be best for people with normal to dry or dehydrated skin, but my skin didn't really love it because like I said, I had the pilling 
and I also had some breakouts. Yeah, wasn't the best for me. So not for me, maybe for you. Next one is the Sunbum Daily Sunscreen Moisturizer. This is an SPF 30. It retails for $19.99. You get 1.7 fluid ounces, which is about 50 milliliters. This one is water resistant for 80 minutes. The active ingredients are homosalate 10%, octocrylene 10%, octosalate 5%, and avobenzone 3%. I'm putting this one in the mid category because I have been using this one on my body in the summer and I like how moisturizing it is but not greasy at the same time. But for my face, it wasn't really a favorite for me. I think, again, this one was created for people with normal to dry skin as with most sunscreens. This one does have a fragrance to it. It kind of has like a banana tropical scent. It did sting my eyes. It had a natural finish, which wasn't too oily. I did start to get shiny in my T-zones. Reapplication was a little bit heavy. I wouldn't recommend really reapplying with this sunscreen. This one didn't cause any breakouts for me either or sensitivity, so that's great as well. But the next one is also from Sunbum. This is the Sunbum Daily Sunscreen Face Mist. I absolutely hated the sunscreen. It's going straight into trash. I think this one was also an SPF 30, if I'm remembering correctly. It retails for $17.99 and you get 2.5 fluid ounces. It's water resistant for 40 minutes. So this one was a like spray mist and on the directions, it says you're supposed to spray it directly to your face. I personally didn't use it like that. I ended up spraying it on my hands and rubbing it into my face and I feel like it ended up working better using it that way, but the active ingredients were homosalate 10%, octocrylene 6%, octosalate 5%, and avobenzone 3%. So the reason I'm putting this one in trash, I have many reasons, but the first reason was it stings your eyes, which is why I said apply it on your hand instead of directly to your face to kind of avoid some of that, but it also moves into your eyes. This one has a very intense smell. It smells like straight up alcohol with a little bit of banana scent in there and it's it's awful <laughs> it's like very bad but when I wore it on bare skin it gave me kind of a normal finish but it felt greasy to the touch it works fine underneath makeup still kind of greasy they said that you can wear it over makeup as a setting spray I would not recommend that at all and then my last reason I hated this one was because um, it caused me some breakouts and my face just felt like itchy and irritated altogether so I wouldn't recommend this to anybody I didn't like it for my skin it's going straight into trash okay the next one is the super goop play everyday lotion it's an SPF 50 plus retails for $22 you get 2.4 fluid ounces this one also comes in a couple different sizes so you can get like a big jug if you want it is water resistant for 80 minutes the active ingredients are avobenzone 3% homosalate 10%, octosalate 5%, and octocrylene 7.5%. I'm putting this one in the put it on my face. I love this sunscreen. I don't care what anybody has to say. I love it, it's for me. It works well on both my face and my body. It also wears well underneath makeup, no issues with that. For me, I mostly wear it on bare skin. I don't really wear it with a moisturizer, but it does have a citrusy smell to it. On bare skin, I was able to rub it on and it dries down pretty quickly. It left a slight natural to glow finish and after two hours, I looked a little glowy, but I didn't feel oily. So reapplication was also pretty good with this one. The other one that I tried from Supergoop was the Supergoop Play Everyday Lotion. This one is an SPF 50. Retails for $34, 1.7 fluid ounces, water resistant for 40 minutes. Active ingredients are avobenzone 3%, homosalate 9%, octosalate 5%, and octocrylene 9%. This one I didn't like as much as I liked the play. Um, and I'm going to put it in mid. I want to put it in mid, but I also want to put it in not for me maybe for you. No, but I did use it on my body, so I'm gonna put it in mid. It gave a very glowy to almost shiny, kind of actually shiny, um, 
greasy feel to it it takes a lot of rubbing and a lot of time for it to dry down i say even after wearing it for a couple hours it still felt kind of like tacky and greasy to the touch which i didn't like and then when you blot it and reapplied it made it even heavier than it was before so definitely a no for me it also stings the eyes this one is best for people with dry or dull skin. It can work with oily skin if you put it on bare skin, but it I just wasn't a fan of it. So I'm gonna put it in mid because I have been reaching for it for my body. That's pretty much the only way that I'll be wearing it. We are cruising through these. I think we only have two more. Okay, wonderful. Next one is the Shiseido Clear Sunscreen Stick. This is an SPF 50 and the only stick sunscreen that I tried this year. It retails for $29. I think this one was at Sephora and the Shiseido website. You get 0.7 ounces or 20 grams and it is water resistant for 80 minutes. The active ingredients are avobenzone 2.5%, homosalate 10%, octosalate 5%, and octocrylene 10%. It, this one does have a fragrance. It's slightly perfumey if you're like really getting close to it and smelling it, but the smell does dissipate. It glides on kind of like a balm, a very smooth silicone balm texture, which some people like, some people hate. For me, I thought it was okay. Um, I also tested this one out on top of makeup and it worked surprisingly. Like the makeup didn't move around um, and I was able to spread the sunscreen all over my face. My only thing is I find that really weird and it kind of, I don't know, it just weirds me out to think that I'm using a product on top of makeup and then the next time I use it, it'll have makeup on it and then I'm gonna put it on my face again. So not a huge fan. And I think stick sunscreens in general kind of gross me out <laughs> personally. I don't know if they're the best option for people with acne prone skin, but I guess if you're double cleansing at the end of the night, it's fine. You can just wash all of that off. But this one I'm putting in the mid category mostly because although it dries down, I feel like on bare skin and with the moisturizer, even after waiting, you can like touch your face and still feel the balminess. And if you have oily skin and you already have like are used to having stuff on your face. You don't really want to start out that way. So wasn't a really a huge fan of that, but when you powder it down, it does stay and it works really well. The thing that I really like about it though is that it doesn't sting my eyes. This is best for people who are on the go, who have normal to dry skin. You can wear it with oily skin, but I just think you might find the silicone balmy texture to be a little bit much. I'm going to use it probably exclusively for my eyes and my problem areas. The last one that I reviewed not that long ago is the Trader Joe's Daily Facial Sunscreen. This is an SPF 40. It retails for $8.99. You can get it at Trader Joe's, 1.7 fluid ounces and water resistant for 40 minutes. The active ingredients are avobenzone 3%, homosalate 12%, Octosilate 5% and octocrylene 6%. This one also contains some shea butter in it. This is supposed to be like a dupe for the Super Goop Unseen sunscreen. It has a very smooth silicone satin finish to it. There's no fragrance and on the bottle it says that it's a matte finish. I personally think it's like a semi-matte and when you wear it for a while it kind of becomes like a normal finish or natural finish. Um, so semi-matte I guess. I do like that silky feel. I like that it's moisturizing enough to wear it on its own. Um, after two hours, I did start to get a little bit shiny in my T-zones, but reapplication was easy to blot and it applies seamlessly. It does work well with other products. It, there's no separation or breakup or anything. And makeup does go on very smooth with it because it is sort of a primer-like feel to it. But I do think that after some time, it just starts to get kind of oily and there is a slight residue when you touch your face. I didn't love it, but I would still use it on my face in the future. I feel like I would like this one better in the winter um, when my face is more dry. I'm gonna say mid, didn't love it, didn't hate it. It does work kind of for my skin, maybe just not in the very hot, hot months that we're in right now. I'm starting to think that maybe I'm just very picky. <laughs> 
I'm definitely a lot pickier with my sunscreens now than I was like a year or two ago when I started doing these sunscreen reviews. It takes a lot for me to be like, oh, I love this product. So, but once I find the products that I love, I like cling to them and stick to them. <laughs> so um, let me know if you guys agree with the way that I ranked things. If you've tried any of these sunscreens and you loved them, let me know if you tried any and you absolutely hated them or you agree with me that they belong in the trash. Also let me know. Don't forget to leave your sunscreen recommendations down in the comment section below and I'll be seeing you guys all in the next one. Bye!